So, uh, we're here. Hello. Uh, Hi. Yeah, we're here with uh, with Tim Jones and with uh, Lenny Cook. Saver, is it Saverline or Saverline? Uh, Saverline. Saverline. Okay, I've got half <laughs> half half of each one. Okay, cool. Uh, you got it. These are our, uh, developers that are joining us today for Classic Season of Discovery. Very very excited about this. Yeah, I hope you guys are uh, excited as I am to uh, to answer some of these questions. I'm stoked. Absolutely. Uh, I'll start off. I have a lot, and I know we don't have a lot of time today, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but. Uh, I'll start off with some of the uh, some community questions because I, I sure. ask people on Twitter and uh, just through streaming stuff like what what are some things people want and a lot of the feedback that I've gotten one of the big ones is is and I'm sure you guys have heard it nonstop it's two handed enhanced shaman and uh, see I'm sure like I'm sure you guys have heard it maybe once or twice I haven't seen anything about that yeah so uh, are are there any uh, are there any plans to add support maybe not in this this phase of sod but uh maybe whenever you guys whenever they get wind fury uh in the next phase i just said that we were only going to support dual wield because i i really just wanted people to make memes that's what fuels us <laughs> on our team so <laughs> uh, the community's voice has been very loud uh on this and we we definitely see that i think the the original um comment that that i made about sort of the, the design philosophy being oriented around dual wield mm. there's definitely dual wield oriented runes. A lot of that comes from the fact that two-hand enhancement shaman really isn't that great until you get, um, you know, self-buffed wind fury. Dual wield sort of helps mm -hmm. shaman out in the first phase when, when you wouldn't have wind fury normally. Yeah, there will definitely be support for, for two-handed shaman in, nice. in future phases. Um, people people don't have to worry about that. We, uh, <laughs> we nice. know it's a beloved, beloved play style. Um, we love the memes. There so. you go. Okay. We're very enthusiastically listening yeah. to feedback. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, that's that's good to hear. Especially that class fantasy. That's that's the big thing that people want. A lot of the the classic shaman players, are, they like their their big two hander. So. Cool. Awesome. Good to hear. The next question. The next question that I have, and let's kind of stay with some of the the class questions. Uh, on the other side of the fence, with paladins, wrath rep paladin gameplay of divine storm has been implemented. And uh, so, so we've seen that in Season of Discovery, and it's almost there with Seal of the Martyr. With the move to make Crusader Strike six seconds instead of four seconds, like it was in Burning Crusade, uh, is there any hope for Seal Twisting to be a thing with Seal of the Martyr and Seal of Command? Because uh, we didn't see that in the BlizzCon demo. Currently, I, I believe Seal of the Righteousness and Seal of Justice can be twisted mm -hmm. into Command or Martyr. We're just really waiting for people to make more memes asking us for <laughs> uh, being able to twist Martyr into Command or vice versa. Um, no, it's 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 definitely something that we're being influenced by by you and and the feedback of of the people who who really love that play style. It, it might not be currently implemented, but we we might be able to get to it um, in in phase one. We know people are excited about it. We know it's a beloved play style. So cool, awesome. Yeah, I mean that's that's a big one. You know, that's that's something like having kind of the. Uh, the option of the Wrath gameplay of Divine Storm and then also having the Burning Crusade option would be would be huge. Being able to like for players to be able to express their their skill like within the nuances of of playing a class is is really important and we want to embrace that where we can in in classic. Awesome. Next question. Are you guys looking at changing any of the current items or uh proc rates of these items in season of discovery? Maybe how the procs you know, work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh so I mean, for, for content like Black Fathom Deeps, we're definitely taking inspiration from previous items that, that existed in, the, in that content set, breathing new life into them, making sure that they, they're balanced based off of their item quality and budget. Some items will actually just become more desirable based off of the, the content phase that we're mm. in. Maybe an item that, that had uh, a proc that, that wasn't that great if you were just leveling past it, Maybe it's maybe it's more interesting now. As far as like adjusting the balance of of existing items or, or proc rates, it's definitely a possibility. Especially as we get into later phases and and get into the max level uh, rating content, there's definitely room for m more player choice is important. And mm -hmm. I think where where some items were maybe memes or just like never desirable or or only useful in a very specific. 
uh, case, I think there's definitely room to try to breathe new life in into that item for for a season of discovery. Like maybe maybe vendor strike is is uh, desirable <laughs> in in some way to some class. Okay. I think that's I think it's it's it makes the encounters more interesting too yeah. if there's if there's more options for um, for for desirable items from those bosses. So speaking of encounters, uh, mm -hmm. how much new content do you guys expect to add at Endgame? So you guys have talked about um, the, you know, BFD is going to be a mid-level raid. Uh, we saw a slide that wasn't supposed to be in the presentation, you know, that might have teased some things. But uh, is, is, there, uh, is there plans to add a lot of content at the end game as well with like a horizontal progression as opposed to like a vertical progression in terms of power creep? There's a lot of uh, lessons that we're going to learn along the way. Mm -hmm. um, we we are planning as far in advance as we can, but we're keeping things a bit open ended at the same time in order to be able to react to player feedback. What do people like about level up raids? Are there are there aspects of that content that that can be interpreted uh, at max level? Should we have additional instanced content at at max level, or or should we focus more on on rewards or some some mix um, mm -hmm. of those things? There's definitely a, a desire to create new content, and that th the desire to make new level up raid content doesn't just end uh, at level <laughs> sixty, right? So um, like we're just, we're passionate about making that new stuff as mm -hmm. as well. So I won't make any promises. There's definitely a desire to to have interesting content that is just beyond um, improving rewards and letting people go through the, the traditional rate tiers. And like we did with this phase, we want to make sure that we have something fun and cool as far as like raids, PvP events, all of that at each of the caps so that you have something that you're exploring when you hit that level cap. Okay. Okay, cool. That's that's yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I, I think you guys mentioned it in the, uh, in the presentation, the idea of approaching it with like the drawing some inspiration from like the classic beta and what was fun mm -hmm. about the classic beta is, is a really, really, really good approach. Um, I think a lot of people are really excited about that. Continue on with itemization. And it, it sounds like you guys are, you know, there, there's some potential to rework some of the current itemization and making more things more useful. Is that gear going to be more optimized like it was at the end of vanilla? Or can you expect m more mid, mid vanilla type of itemization, early to mid vanilla itemization? Like, BWL patch gear versus like Nax patch gear because Nax patch gear was basically Burning Crusade like it was all perfect stats on everything. You know, and and this sort of plays into the the horizontal progression that sort of exists even mm -hmm. within raid tiers. When you don't have a perfect item, it sometimes makes like choosing how to gear your character out or figuring out what combinations of, of items and stats are best on your character. It, it makes that a more interesting process and yeah, more nuanced process. I'm sure all of us have heard Kevin Jordan talk about like item item balancing, it, how it's how it's interesting to have well items that have well-rounded stats, items that are specialized in offense, mm -hmm. utility or defense and, and how the stat budgets change um, based upon like the design of that item. I think we want that more nuanced approach to to item design. Yeah, uh, that, I, mean, that I, mean, I think it just me. creates more interesting <laughs> interesting choices for players, right? Yeah, no, that sounds great. Sounds really. And really we, great. we also want want to make sure that our items have a handcrafted feel to them. That, cool. That's that's what I wanted to add. I like that. That's a good way of putting it. Uh, here's another thing that uh, I've seen. This is this is a lot of feedback I've gotten from rogue players. People being worried about having to apply instant poisons mid encounter, mm -hmm. like if they're in assassination build and uh, they're their poisons are being spammed and then all of a sudden they they ran out of, they run out of charges mid fight so is there any plans to uh to i guess counter that uh yeah we've we've actually made some adjustments that i think um rogue players will be excited about especially people who want to pursue the poison um gameplay there's actually a couple adjustments um that that i'll go through so you know people may have seen in the blizzcon demo that wild strikes from druid could stack on top of temporary enchants mm -hmm. um so so people could benefit from poisons and wind fury at the same time we want to make sure that there's parity in between shaman um wind fury totem and wild strikes from druid cool. so wind fury will not stack anymore from uh f with temporary enchants however mm. rogues um, rogues who we're, we're, we're going to buff the, the deadly brew rune, um, for rogues such that, you know, originally it was 
if you had a poison on your weapons already, then it would simultaneously be able to apply deadly poison if you had an active poison. Now, if you don't have a poison applied, or if you have a temporary enchantment like a sharpening stone or wild strikes or wind fury, then your weapon can proc instant poison without it being applied. So, oh. so rogues who want to have instant poison on their weapons for the sake of playing assassination don't actually have to have a poison at all as long as they're using the deadly brew rune and they can additionally benefit from wind fury or sharpening stones if, if that's what they want to do. So want to give players that flexibility and also that excitement of maybe having a poison and something else on your weapon simultaneously. Wow, okay. So you get like a default default poison put in there. Mm -hmm. Sick. Speaking of some of the talents and stuff, will there be any fundamental changes to classes or talent trees outside of the new runes? So uh, possibly stuff that we'd see applied to classic era as well. So there's, there's not a plan to really ever explicitly change the structure or placement of talents in the talent tree. Right. With that said, people have probably already seen that some runes benefit from talent points spent mm -hmm. on other abilities. So like, for example, Wild Strike on Warriors benefits from any talent that benefits Heroic Strike. There will definitely be um, a continuation of that policy. If there's ever something that benefits fire damage, then runes that deal fire damage will benefit from those talents as well. And we, we want to make sure that that we're we're catching all those where we can. Um, but as as far as like changing um, or adding like healing specific talents to the arcane tree, that probably won't happen. That'll manifest itself in in the runes um, themselves. Yeah, we really want to make sure that the season is self contained. And any of the new kind of wacky functionality is specifically in the season. Yeah. There's also technical limitations that we have to deal with. Like yeah. it's a, a good reminder is that Season of Discovery lives on top of era and hardcore. <laughs> Maybe one day we can have conditional talent trees based off of uh, what what content set or what what season is is active we've put our effort into <laughs> making making the content as exciting as possible we might have that in the future but that's not on on the table for the current season i, I guess to clarify i guess what mm -hmm. more so instead of changing like the shape of the talent trees what i was talking about was changing specific uh like like values or like under the hood things with the talents like how mm -hmm. they're applied and whatnot i guess is is more so what i was talking about which sure. Uh, so I guess if, if it lives on top of classic era and it lives on top of hardcore and, and everything else, uh, then it would have to, you know, if you made a change in era, it would then apply to season of discovery, right? It depends. Like there, okay. there are ways of us conditioning spells to do a different thing in, in era versus season of discovery. So we can make a talent that exists behave differently in, in two oh, different okay. environments. However, like the actual structure and placement of those talents is is not going to change. Oh, okay, cool. Um, but the talents themselves could potentially behave or read differently, and we can condition that um, in season of discovery how we like. That's uh, that's super interesting, actually. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I like how you you're answering like multiple questions that I have at a time, which is nice. <laughs> or like you can, you can context Helping. clue it, and it's like okay, well this means that. Great. You guys have added warlock tanks, mage mm -hmm. healers basically new new roles for existing classes are you guys hard committed to having these things in the game uh throughout the different phases as, as you level up it's like we we are going to make this work and also are you guys open to adding any anything else that is not currently there some people have been talking about maybe like a, a melee mage like a battle mage or like a melee <laughs> priest or something has there, has there been is there is there a chance that there's even more roles of more classes? For your first question, we are definitely committed to keeping these roles in Season of Discovery. People are really excited about them and we want to keep growing them. So we want to make sure that people can keep exploring those class fantasies. The I'll jump on the second part of your question. Nothing's off the table. We, <laughs> the the existing um, batch of runes that we have planned from, from 1 to 60 is actually a fraction of the total runes that we planned and built um, for the season. And we've 
you know, some some we've had to remove based off of just design philosophy reasons. Like we we actually had a lot of when we were doing our our blue sky ideation of mm -hmm. just throwing everything at the wall. Maybe some versions of of movement enhancing runes were were originally um, going to be included. I think Warrior had like a chain death grip, mm -hmm. um, which sounds tight. Like that that sounds really cool. Or or like. You know, wouldn't it be neat if druids had stampeding roar? Like that's a useful spell. However, making sure that we still stay true in some respects to what classic vanilla is, I think, is incredibly important. And raid raid encounters, dungeon encounters weren't built with the assumption that everyone could move to any space right. on the battlefield at any given time. We have added Warbringer, so you know, <laughs> yeah. warriors have a bit extra mobility, but like. The classes where that's part of their identity, I think it's okay to accentuate that and build that up. But giving those tools to everyone, you know, it sort of muddies the water and makes those classes less special. Yeah. Um, and it 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 trivializes some of the existing um, mechanics and, and encounters that we still want to feel like classic, and we still want people to have to strategize around some of these mechanics. Awesome. I mean, so I, I actually, so to follow up on that, a lot of what, what we've seen and a lot of what people talk about and just all, all things considered, all the suggestions, it's, hey, can you add X ability from Y expansion for Z class? And I guess, so when you guys are in your design meetings, how, how are you guys kind of managing it and keeping it from going too far and to differentiate from, uh, to basically differentiate season of discovery from being more classic plus and less retail minus? Uh, honestly, our biggest focus right now is, does it feel like classic? We want right. this to feel like you're continuing your adventure through the classic World of Warcraft and with just, you know, plus a little bit more to do. So yeah. we really want to, we want it to feel like that world and everything is focused around the class fantasy, feeling like it's just a continuation. Uh, we've talked awesome. a lot about with runes, with uh, different rune discoveries, and new things in the world. We want them to feel like maybe they've been there the whole time. You just haven't found them yet. Maybe they were back there in 2019. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? And we want to do the same kind of thing with the classes to still make them feel like they're classic classes. Sick. There's there's also elements from the original design of of you know vanilla back in 2004 that some of these things aren't actually that outlandish or or pulling pulling from someplace that has never been. Like rogues had bucklers, you know, back in, in back alpha. in the original yeah. alpha of mm. of WoW. So there was maybe some design intention for rogues to be able to to tank in a certain way um and in sort of embracing that um the avoidance aspect of of their tanking i think stays true to um aspects of classic and we you know as far as like the design of tanks for mm -hmm. example i think it's also important that we that it's okay for certain classes to have strengths and weaknesses we awesome. don't I, I think like every tank should be able to function at at a base level and mm -hmm. do basic content but there should also be some some places of the game where they're not the best at or that they really excel at whether that's you know throwing a chain lightning out to to start a pull so you have have group aggro that's an incredible pulling tool that, that a yeah. shaman has um or like if you need huge defensive cooldowns maybe a warrior is the best tank Love um it. maybe mobs have resistances <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that 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 makes the the warlock and shaman not the ideal um uh tank in that situation i think it's okay to have elements of of friction in the world that's something that that makes classic classic and and we we are definitely keeping those those rough edges to keep the spirit of classic alive awesome. in that way yeah, we love that. That's that's good stuff. I mean, that's uh, <clears throat> I literally had that question. I was like, you know, the, it feels like the classes are maybe the tanks specifically. That's what I actually what I wrote. The tanks are getting homogenized. But yeah, there you go. Boom. Good to hear. Good to hear. That's good stuff. Without getting too specific, because uh, I know you guys can't for obvious reasons. <laughs> um, do you guys have any any plans in place to do anything to uh, nip potential botting and and gold buying in the bud? Just stop it in its tracks as much as possible on the new server launch because yeah, because it's a fresh it's not there yet do, do you guys have a plan in place that maybe trying something new or anything like that yes we're, we're <laughs> there there is always new tech okay. and new new detection methods that that we are 
are are implementing and working with our engineers. It's not just engineers on the classic team looking at that mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. We have our risk department. We have engineers on mainline who are creating new tech to help us identify people who are exploiting the game either like through the various hacks that, that people use to, to gain unfair advantages. And um, we're definitely sensitive to that, especially on new servers, like having as pristine of, a, of an economy as possible is something that I, I like as the assistant lead designer on, on Classic, it's something that's incredibly important to me coming up with design and, and engineering oriented solutions to help fight against that is is something that's incredibly important to us and i know a lot of people don't see like what goes on behind the scenes and and it's it's easy to focus on like what is visible but it's Mm -hmm. it's a constant battle it's hard to see what isn't uh visible right like to right unknowns um of of what we're doing i'm just repeating myself at this point it is important (laughs) we are doing stuff um it is a constant battle i i hope i hope people can can um see that cool it's a very active discussion and always on our minds yeah awesome that is that is good to hear that is very good to hear uh can we expect any big changes or any additions to uh professions in the mid to end game because you know some people have been talking about oh like this this I mean, you never really know a stuff that's leaked, data mine, whatever, right? Can, can we expect to see some changes to to professions in the mid to end game? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know, it, it, just as we want players to feel like there's there's a lot of options to play within the what runes you choose, what class you play, uh, we we want there to be choices in professions as well. Just just as we try to bring things up to perhaps where. Th- the warrior is we want to do the same thing for all the other professions that aren't engineering right like mm-hmm. <laughs> engineering is great we love engineering but we want the ability for other professions to shine whether that's like profession oriented quest lines mm-hmm. um really embracing profession specializations maybe looking at some recipes for profession items that were way too expensive to build in the future that that sort of made them unavailable because they were such an investment before you actually you maybe got a drop that was better than the profession item because it would take too long to build that profession item right. at certain levels we're, we're looking at those yeah. as well or anything from the <laughs> thorium brotherhood right yeah. um <laughs> so yeah. you know l- looking at those things and, and figuring out like what would be cool with professions. Um, I know I have great memories of becoming like an armor smith and aligning myself with the Thorium Brotherhood as a yeah. blacksmith in in original um, vanilla. So those are great memories. I want people to to have an excuse to be a tribal leather worker. You yeah. know, those are definitely things that we want to explore and and be a part of of Season of Discovery for sure. Fantastic. That's good. It's real good. Next up. I have, uh, this is, this is a little bit more, uh, I guess this is a little bit more outside the scope of like talents and, and that kind of stuff outside of the character. Are there any plans for changes to the level design of the world? Um, like building out any of the new terrain, maybe a new zone or, uh, even possibly finishing like what people consider to be unfinished zones, like Hygel or something like vanilla Hygel, um, or anything like that. I don't think we can say anything specific on this. What mm-hmm. I will say, however, is that there is a desire to make new things on on our team. We are doing our best to not let anything really be a limitation to that. Whether or not that there is there is something completely new that that has never been in Season of Discovery or, or any version of Classic WoW before. I mean, we're making new things, right? We're making things yeah. that haven't been there before. We're, we're reusing some stuff initially. There is definitely a desire to explore the types of possibilities that, that you're that you're talking about. So cool. our team is passionate and excited to, to try all sorts of new things. Cool. Mm-hmm. Speaking from a player's perspective, uh, I think that uh, a lot of people would agree that we can see it. If, if you guys, if you build it, they'll come. You know, that's what they always say. So <laughs> we'll we'll be there. You know, if uh, if if the opportunity awesome. if the opportunity comes, then we will we will absolutely be there to to play it and enjoy it. So earlier this week, I think it was this week, um, there was a there's a post that went out uh, that was talking about uh, faction locking servers for mm. balance. Do you guys have an idea at what percentage the character creation for uh, dominant factions will be locked? at on the pvp servers like what uh like population split can you guys even say that i don't know 
we definitely have an idea. Yeah. <laughs> we, we know. <laughs> we set the values. I, I don't... <laughs> I don't know. As to whether there... we're ready to talk about it today, not so okay. much. Okay. No worries. No worries. No worries. Yeah. Um, no, I, I, there's I there's totally a level that. of obscurity that's mm-hmm. probably important for players to to have. We don't want it to feel too unnatural or or uh, yeah. Super I mean, We're we're we're, we're, we're yeah. gonna do our best to make sure <laughs> that the those those servers feel feel good and 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 balanced. We'll be constantly monitoring those those numbers and and be making adjustments as needed. Okay, cool. Okay, I have another itemization question. Sure. How are you guys trying to balance runes against talents and gear? Uh, for example, uh, you know, some of the new newest tank runes give mm-hmm. a lot of the biggest and most important tanking stats for free, while uh, original tank builds are still built through talents and gear. And that's a lot of like what vanilla is. A lot of what classic is, is people like building their character and they like getting that loot. They like being like, oh, I'm put on this piece of gear for this encounter and all that. Um, how, how do you guys really, I guess, balance that, differentiate that and, and try and uh, uh, apply that to some of the new tank classes? It's tricky, right? Because I, I'm sure that, you know, all those tanks, those warrior tanks who've had such a hard time playing classic are, are really <laughs> jealous of, of classes getting some stuff for free. No, just <laughs> joking aside, um, some, I mean, Protection Paladin, the, some of the tools have been there to be a functional tank, mm-hmm. but they also suffer from the fact that, like, you need a lot of different stats yes. to, 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 to do what you... Um, need to do at at even a baseline Mm -hmm. whether whether it's like the the hit or the spell hit um the needing attack power um and intellect for for a mana pool Mm -hmm. um sort of like you you sort of having having items that fulfill all those roles the the amount of total stats that you have is just sort of not enough to measure up to um, the performance of other tanks. So with that in mind, I don't see it as really a negative that we're giving stats away for free. We're giving crit immunity away for free or armor bonuses away for free. I think that there will still be really interesting gear choices um, for those characters. And at the same time, like, I, it's interesting to have items that are hyper specialized, like only one class wants this, only one specialization wants this. But I think it's it's even more interesting if if an item maintains desirability for multiple specializations, multiple archetypes. Um, after one person gets that item, like like cloth with armor on it, like that's gonna be. Like cloth with bonus armor as part of the item budget, that's going to be really special to warlocks. Yeah, warlocks gonna, who want to tank it's gonna, now, right? Yeah, be something useful now. But it maybe maybe someone wanted to use that piece for for PvP or dueling against melee classes beforehand too. So even though it is semi specialized, like um, it is still desirable by multiple classes. And because we're giving some defense oriented stats to classes baseline then we don't have to build cloth with defense rating on right, it okay right so um we're, we sort of give ourselves more room to make cool items for more classes um this way there's there's itemization ramifications obviously for for right. um building the runes in the in the way that we did i think i think that's what what really matters at the end of the day we want to make cool items we want lots of people to be interested in in the same item they're having healthy competition over rewards is is important at all stages of the game um so that's that's sort of the philosophy there first on completely agree i I mean i i I love that you mentioned specifically for prop paladins like you just Mm -hmm. need so many stats for them to be like really effective is one of their biggest problems um, outside of the taunt, everybody talks about the taunt, right? Everybody talks about that as like the thing, but there's there's a number of other like small issues. Now, to everything you said, from a class fantasy perspective, this is this is kind of me and you know talking with the fellow paladin brothers, right? Uh, spell power. People really like having spell power as like a one of the primary like threat generation stats for prop mm-hmm. paladins. Is that still going to be a thing with how prop paladins want to build their class? Like, are they still going to want to have like a, a, a spell power sword or uh, some other ways of getting spell power on their gear to be able to increase their threat gen? 
Sorry, just jumping in. Uh, this will be the last question. Okay. Perfect. I, I might not have the best answer for you. I'm I'm not like <laughs> as as much of an expert at, at at Paladin as you are, as other people on our team uh -huh. um, are that that are that are helping make these types of decisions. I will say, like, if that's something that you're passionate about and that you like how the class functions, and those are the types of rewards that you want to see, then we'll we will do our best to make sure that those are are the types of of rewards that exist in in places that they they don't um, currently. So cool. Um, I don't well, no, no, I don't want to give you a non answer, but like, no, no but it's a good answer because because people people get to see that like the the feedback is heard. Like when when mm -hmm. people have a chance to share their feedback with you guys that. Uh, you guys are listening, and I, and I think there's there's a lot of value in that, and uh, I think there's a lot of value in, in this interview and the fact that you guys are willing to come and, and come on and get to talk to us as, as content creators, and like I said, you guys make our job easy. We just show up and hit record a lot of times, so uh, I really appreciate you guys coming on, uh, spend the time. I know you guys are incredibly busy. Uh, hopefully season discovery is not late because of this interview. So, <laughs> so thanks a ton for joining me guys. Uh, again, uh, for those of you guys who are watching, uh, Tim Jones, uh, Lenny cook, uh, Saverline is here as well. So thank you guys so much for joining me. And, uh, is there anything you guys want to say before we, uh, send it? No, we're, we're just, we're as excited to, to see everyone play as we are. Like I'm, I'm just excited to play season of discovery myself. Like <laughs> cool. it's going to be fun to jump in there uh, with everyone on Thursday. Cool. And I'm really, really excited to get everybody's feedback. Like we want to know what you want to see in this game. Uh, classic came about as a love letter to the fans because of the community. And we really want to be able to take community feedback and do really cool things with this season. Awesome. Awesome. I well, agree. again, 100%. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you guys in Azeroth. Thank you. That's fun. See you thank in Azeroth. You. Absolutely incredible. I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys got some information out of that that was useful. I know I certainly did. Uh, I'm very, very excited about that uh, interview. I'm very excited about Season of Discovery coming out today. Make sure to like the video. If you guys haven't liked it already, leave a comment. If you guys have any feedback about Season of Discovery or anything, they read it. They will probably read the comments of this video. Leave a comment below. Leave some feedback. Uh, I'll try and forward some stuff personally as well. Let's get to it. It's a great day for Azeroth. Like the video, subscribe, turn on your notifications, all that stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, see you guys next time.